Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. I never quite have an idea of how long the Swedish lady is going to speak for at the start of the battle. If you see my rather really awkward introductions when that happens, she does have a few voice lines, and I just don't know when she's going to stop talking. Anyway, I digress. Let's focus on what's at hand. I'm playing on my Plays for Free account. This is an account that I started towards the end of last year to see what this game is like when you don't actually just have effectively free gold or just so much gold on your account over the years that you can do whatever you want with it. I wanted to get back into what it feels like to play with 75% crews, to play even at the start with 50% crews, to not have free experience to be able to skip some of the most horrible modules on the different vehicles. And I can tell you it definitely opened my eyes up to what it's like. Playing for free is hard, yo! It seriously is. There have been times when I've been playing this account over the last um, year that I have wanted to tear my hair out. Let's just say it like that. When you, you know that your tank is worse than it should be because you don't have that 100% crew, when you know that if you were playing on your main count or if you'd had a, a full concealment crew that you, you would have probably been able to make it across that gap without being spotted, when you're playing in a tier 8 Swedish sneaky tank destroyer like the Udez, yeah, you definitely want to be as sneaky as you possibly can. I wanted to get this vehicle as my first high tier tank destroyer on this account for a couple of reasons. Firstly, what is the main disadvantage that a free to play a player has? Probably one, premium consumables, uh, and, and secondly, undoubtedly, it's going to be the fact that they can't afford to fire premium rounds nearly as much. On a tank like the Udez, it doesn't really matter because it has 288mm of penetration on its standard rounds and 330 on its premium rounds. Now, I'm only ever really going to dab that 2 key very, very, very rarely on this account. And on this account as well, I've got lots of credits now, but I'm still wanting to make sure that I don't miss the purpose of why I started it towards the end of last year. And that is to really see the differences in World of Tanks that you can manage to achieve between having everything and really having to work for it or just not having all of the advantages that the, the premium players will have. And so I refuse to use premium consumables on this account, even though I know that if I was to use that Swedish premium consumable on the Udez, it would just be so darn juicy. I, I, I can't emphasize enough just how much of an advantage it is to have that extra 5% view range. Even just to be able to have it on your crew members with situational awareness and recon revolutionizes what you can do with a lot of the mid-tier tanks. What I've been finding is that even using binoculars on a vehicle like this is not enough to really get up to a decent amount of view range. 350 base like the Udez has barely gets up to the 445 meters maximum spotting distance. Let me clarify, there is no max view range in World of Tanks. Of course, when you start to get up to 550, 600 meters, it becomes very much less useful. And I think the sweet spot for me is around about 500 meters view range because then that will counteract the concealment that people have. Yeah, 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 I'm not going to go into it in full detail in this video, and hopefully everybody knows what I'm talking about. If you don't, then then go, come and ask me on stream tonight. Come and ask me. Actually, please don't ask me. That's going to be a pretty heavy thing to answer. It will take me about half an hour to be able to do so. Look at me now, just wasting time. Focus on what you're trying to talk about, Scrub Lord. Well, what I'm trying to talk about is the fact that Without premium consumables, without it just really has been impacting my view range. And I did not realize how much of an advantage a premium player has when it comes to view range inside the game. Now, binoculars are a good way to counter that, but then you only have the view range when you're sitting still. So obviously a vehicle like this almost perfect for a free-to-play player because when you are sitting still, you can activate your binoculars, you can even turn the tank without breaking your concealment. So your turreted tank destroyers like the Scorpion G would be able to do that, but also your Swedish siege mode tank destroyers like the Udez will be able to do that as well. Now, if I had concealment crew, all of those different perks on this tank, it would have been so nice. I actually played this thing completely stock. I played it without the tracks, without the engine, and without the top gun. And it was, yeah, it was an experience, let me let me say that. You see the traverse speed on the Udez inside the siege mode. Until you get the top tracks and the top engine on this tank, it's absolutely horrific. This thing turns, and you're just unable to really play it as if it's a, a, a sniper. You, you, you turn the tank fully, it takes forever to be able to get around, but when you do finally have the thing fully upgraded, you are a little absolute monster sniper. Probably the best one of, if not the best sniper tier for tier in the game. And I know the Stritzfang 103B is clearly the best sniper if you're not thinking about tiers, but this thing has got 0.25 accuracy inside the siege mode, just like the tier 10 tank has. And so you can snipe pixels. Even without having premium consumables, I felt like this is just an absolute wonderful vehicle to play 
because of that capacity to snipe. And where I aim is roughly where the shell is going to go. And just look at that, pretty much right on target. I just love the consistency that I have in this vehicle. And you see that every single time that I fire, I leave the siege mode because I'm going to try and get back as quickly as I can out of these bushes. Now, what you're going to be seeing me do here in a little bit is I'm going to use some, well, actually right now, I'm going to use some sneaky tactics. All right, so I'm going to pull back. I, I talk about this frequently. I'm going to pull back behind the bush until the bush is no longer transparent. And when the bush is no longer transparent, that means we can shoot through the bush without going getting spotted. Then what I'm going to do is just triple check that I don't actually get spotted. And then if I want to spot these players, you're going to see that the Skoda actually goes dark there. We have to go back into the bush if we want to be able to spot the SU-101. And he's actually been spotted by the Skoda in front of me. So we're going to go forwards into the bush again. Now we're going to be spotting him ourselves. We're going to go into the siege mode. And then we're going to actually leave the siege mode a little bit because I realize I'm not going to get to shoot the Skoda. We pull back behind the bush where if we fire through, we're still going to maintain our camo. And bam, there we go. A shutdown. And just look at what we're being able to achieve from these sneaky bush locations in this tank with good use of key game mechanics. We're up to 5,000 combined already. That's a cracking game for this tank. Are we going to be able to push it higher? Well, yes, I would certainly hope that to do so. So, free to play. What have I found in the last year? I found that you really have to be quite selective with the tanks that you want to play. Some of the tanks going up the tech tree are absolutely horrific and they will hold you back massively. Other tanks that you can target, you can actually have a pretty darn good time in World of Tanks completely free to play by playing a tank like the Udez. Now it's going to take you a while to get there and unless you play a little bit tight towards tier 8 you're probably going to only just about break even at tier 8 and if you want to go up to 9 and 10 yeah then you're going to really start to hemorrhage credits inside the game. But there are definitely vehicles out there, the incredible free to play vehicles that I'm just starting to discover now as I start to reach about 2,000, 3,000 gamers played on this account. I unlocked my first tier 10 tank, you all know that was the Progetto 65. Yeah, I've definitely been struggling with it at tier 10 free to play, although I've probably got to get a few more games under my belt before I really start to hit my groove with that tank on the free to play account. But the Udez, I'm really looking forward to, to keeping on having a few more rounds in this, because this was practically, I think, the first round that I had in the tank where it was fully upgraded. And it's not too bad stock, actually. The 90mm, it's definitely not special, like the 105mm is on this tank. But I was able to make the 90mm work. I think I was packing about a 60% win ratio and averaging about 1,800 damage. Not incredible for a tier 8 tank destroyer, but considering that was the damage that I was averaging when I was completely stock, whoa, definitely makes it absolutely lovely when you unlock that top gun. So I wonder... In World of Tanks, do we actually need to have stock grinds to make us truly appreciate how special the tanks are when they're fully upgraded? Ah, uh, I mean, I can, it's an argument that that is the case, but I, I also think that that's probably Wargaming just wanting to try to sell a little bit more free experience, right? Sure, I think you have to have a few tanks that are poor along the way, but do we even really need stock tanks in um, like nine years after the game has been released, right? I think for a tank like this, it's, it's okay, because this tank is still playable stock. But there are definitely some tanks in the game. I'm looking at you, tier 5 Polish heavy, a medium tank, that honestly are almost like game-breakingly bad. Stock moisture as well. Just the mobility that you have on that vehicle. You literally feel like you're a big XP piñata walking around. Free to play World of Tanks is hard, yo. I know I said that already in this video. It's definitely what I'm feeling right now. I really do... I'm really, really happy that I've played this account over the last year and I've got that feeling, I've got that vibe and I feel like I'm more in touch now with the way that the vast majority of players play World of Tanks than I've ever been probably since the release. Please, come on, no! The Udez shuts us down, so no Top Gun for us. I was kind of hoping somebody was going to be able to hit him before he managed to hit me. But oh my word, what a cracking result for the free-to-play Udez here. Five kills, 8,000 combined and combined with Wargaming's five times experience missions that the EU server has had and the free day of premium that they gave us that I definitely made a good use on of this account, that was 12,000 experience, 1,529 base. It was actually more like 8k combined, well halfway, over halfway there with some of the blind shots that we hit. And there's one thing for sure that while I have mentioned multiple times, playing for free is hard. It just feels so much more rewarding when I have a big game on this account than when I've had a big game on my other account where I've had to have all of the advantages. And it just really makes me a little bit sad about being such a keen World of Tanks player. Why can't this be the base level? Why can't the game actually be 
free to play where everybody is at the same level irrelevant of having to pay the game pay to play the game every single month effectively by being able to afford all of those advantages with a premium account and while i understand that that's not going to ever happen inside the game and clearly wargaming has a very effective business model that there are still millions of players around the world that are enjoying. It just really does suck that I even have to have an account like this. One thing I've noticed as well recently is that now that Wargaming have changed the fact that you can use crew directives for credits inside the game, yeah, it's definitely almost pumped up the, the pay to win even more. Now, what do I mean? Well, obviously, when it was for directives only, it was just a, a ludicrous system where only either tier 10 players could have the directives or alternatively people who play ranked battles and participated in the most competitive game modes who had the bonds could effectively, effectively use them to get a little bit of an edge over the entire player base. Well, now that these directives are available for credits, but 20,000 credits, 10 to 20,000 credits at that, they're now only clearly available for the premium players inside the game who can afford to dump 20,000 credits a game on, on a premium consumable, let alone 40,000 credits on a premium consumable plus a premium directive. It's just not happening. And so it's really interesting for me that Wargaming put in these directives and I didn't really complain about them because I thought they were going to be such a small aspect of the game. But now that they're available for credits, it's just another slot where you can pay a substantial amount of credits in each of your battles to have what will end up being a significant edge over your opponents. I put a concealment directive on a fresh medium tank the other day and it literally just gave me 10% better camo when moving around. And that's because the concealment directive inside the game effectively boosts all of your crew to have 100% concealment. So effectively, anybody who has a premium account, anybody who has tier 8 premium tanks, anybody who's willing to sit there and grind frontline for a, a huge amount of time with those perks that they've purchased, will be able to get access to a whole sleuth of credits, and then they're just running around 10% more sneaky that you are. You are literally going to spot them at 440 meters rather than 400 meters. And as any experienced player will know, that's often the difference between you getting the drop on your opponent or, or them getting the drop on you. So I've been playing World of Tanks, albeit part-time, completely for free over the last year. And I can tell you, is it the kind of game that I would want to play? Well, yes, I guess it would be. If I didn't know any better, then I'd probably be quite happy with the way that the tanks play out. But having been a premium player and trying to go back to play the game like this, it's just absolutely ludicrous with how much of, at how much of a disadvantage that anyone who chooses to play the game for free truly is. Anyway, that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's not time for a tech tree showcase today. It's time for a super special event of epic proportions because it's the last Sunday of this decade. Although for some reason, some people think that the decade ends at the end of next year. I'm going to go with it being at the end of 2019 before we start the 2020s. And so today I am going to try and play every single tier 10 tank that I possibly can until I guess I drop or I just get so bored that I, I can't do it anymore. And so if you've ever wanted to see gameplay in pretty much every single tier 10 tank in the game, then come along right now. I'm going to be rolling the dice, selecting them one by one by one. And keep going until I drop. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.